A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back to Films I'm Willing to Talk About Again. And I sincerely welcome you guys back here to the channel. I'm especially grateful for how things have become. Here in recent years, there's been lots of change, lots of things happened, and lots of things have somehow become more devastating than possible. But yet we're going to see if we can in fact try to evade all this by simply talking about a film that is a bit more obscure than you might think. Remember me. And I'm specifically talking about the 2010 film that stars the likes of Robert Pattinson, Emily DeRaven, and even Pierce Brosnan, who was in fact the star of other various films. Such as if you remember last year when I talked about Dante's Peak, for example. That was one of many films from the 90s that starred this incredible actor. But, of course, it's not necessarily about the cast, but it's more about the plot out there that kind of makes this film a bit of an interesting pick. Because what happens is that Emily DeRaven and Robert Pattinson's characters meet up at some point. They each have different lives. One is horrible and one is incredible by all means. It's a bit of a classic mashup of the low end and the high end when it comes to life, having a lower class and an upper class come together, or just simply put, two different kinds of people all together. They come together and they want to have a relationship. Unlike what most people can probably get, where some people do have access to others who are within their own class, or within their own age group, or within any other unique aspect, about each of them. No matter the background, it does seem that this film does try to prove the point where no matter what kind of position you're in or whatever kind of occupation you might have, there's somebody out there waiting in the wings that are indeed worth waiting for. But of course, Pierce Brosnan's character ends up stepping right in and simply letting the two know that they're not necessarily made for each other. And this whole film basically just spends an entire plot line just trying to reverse that. It goes from simply having them meet up to having them meet the parents, to having the parent reject them, and then of course to try and see if they can convince each other that they're made for each other. However, as time goes on, things do in fact get interesting, so you really do have to be patient pretty much. The last time I saw this was actually a few years ago, so not necessarily too recent, but also not too long ago. I still do have some distinct memory of some of these details by any means. Such as the point where things do in fact become a little dangerous, and lots of backstory begins to emerge. I tell you, this film is just one of a kind, by all means. This was pretty much the first time I ever got to know about actor Robert Pattinson, prefer others like The Lighthouse, and in much more recent years, or should I say more recent times as a whole, we got The Batman 2022. So, probably the most recent example we'll ever get at the moment, but by all accounts, does this necessarily mean that this should be considered a good film? Well, pretty much everybody thinks differently. Metacritic, for example, only puts it around 40%, Rotten Tomatoes at 27%, IMDb at 7.1 out of 10, and then of course with various others, as I've done research on so much of this, trying to figure it out, how exactly is this supposed to do well compared to other films I've talked about already, it just seems to be a bit of a confusing mess. So I feel like that this might be one of many reasons why this film actually did not necessarily seem to perform all too well, but in any case though, having the likes of director Colton pretty much. And then of course with Underground Films being the production company that made this film. It's not necessarily a big company like Lionsgate, Warner Brothers, or Universal, but it's Underground Films this time. Then again, it does seem that other companies that are much, much, much more smaller and lesser known, like A24 and many others, they do somehow seem to thrive pretty well. And so, I'm more than glad that these companies are improving pretty well, but yet, what does it necessarily mean with this film itself? Well, it's just a bit of a more tale of romance 
and a bit of a spectacular mashup that tries to bring in the bad and the good lives together into one, just to see if things could go better for each of them. But then, of course, there's just a bit of confusing parts in there that just doesn't necessarily seem to make it all more understandable or relatable. Probably not at all. And do I feel like that this might actually be better than the likes of most other films? No, not really. Although, of course, the budget of $16 million, a box office scoring of $56 million, which led to $40 million in profits, it seemed to have paid off well to some of the cast and crew members that were present at the time, but I don't ultimately have this as a recommendation. I've known about it since it came out, I've owned a DVD copy of it since it came out, and then of course I was able to watch it a few years ago. Yet I'm not really feeling it with this one. I probably consider it a bit of a more average pick out there by today's standards. And so by all accounts, do watch this only if you feel like that you have to. In the same way that I have, because I've talked about it once, and I sure as heck have talked about it again. Today. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more, go down to my channel, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.